In this presentation, I will suggest that our wholesale uncritical embrace of social media is a symptom of the way we live now, and that to attribute social ills to social media is to reverse any causal relationship. I will suggest how we may use instant electronic communication in its many forms to try to heal the wounded attachments we experience and witness in contemporary life. Homo sapiens has not had time to evolve to meet the loneliness of modern daily existence. So let us observe these activities with a perspective drawn from the art in art therapy, in addition to attachment theory, neurobiological and psychoanalytic perspectives to identify any therapeutic potential. There is a media frenzy today about people's, particularly young people's, use of social media. For example, there are risks posed by accessing pro-self-harm, pro-anorexia and pro-suicide images. This includes a recent case in Britain where a family believes that their daughter's access of material on Instagram contributed to her completing suicide. We witness an almost desperate headlong rush to simultaneous multi-platform engagement with our social networks. Homo sapiens, us, has evolved over 300,000 years of working, sleeping and eating with our families and friends that were suddenly cut off in 250 years of industrialisation. Children now have to cope with parents continuously absent for 6 to 10 hours a day and partners no longer see each other during the day. We've not had time to evolve to meet the loneliness of modern life. This has contributed to relationship breakdowns, workplace affairs, substance misuse and a sharp rise in depressive mental illness. Human attachment is the primary indicator of good mental health. Human attachment evolved over 300,000 years to suit the briefest of absences from our loved ones in our daily lives. No wonder we have embraced social media with such alacrity. Now, workers can glance sideways from their task as the screen of their smartphone lights up with a picture message from their partner or child. This is the context in which, in which such images are made and viewed. However, there is a shadow side. In 2005, there was a brief craze called happy slapping. This craze consisted of random assaults filmed by phone and uploaded. Viewing these incidents can best be described as ugly voyeurism. Well, such ugly voyeurism is also at the heart of online bullying and cyberbullying in schools and the workplace. In my practice as a psychotherapist in child and family therapy clinics, I hear accounts of school bullying that extends beyond the school gates and into the child's bedroom via social network sites. Pictures are accompanied by emojis, stickers or GIFs in the social media world. Well, arts therapists have more tools at their disposal to address these media than do purely verbal therapeutic workers. As art therapists working with social media, smartphones, etc., we can use images to roughen the texture of experience in a way that is similar to the marks in art therapy, the sounds in music therapy and the gestures in drama therapy. Using smartphones, the textural roughening of the daily routine could disrupt negative thought or rumination for someone experiencing low mood. Similar techniques could help someone, perhaps with Alzheimer's, a stroke or other brain injury, break their stasis or fugue state and prompt thought or action. For example, when working with families, a programmed alert that I can talk to my mum, dad, sibling, granny might reduce the likelihood of self-harm or increase the likelihood of them talking. A picture alert will serve as a much more powerful reminder than words alone. One young person co-authored a strategy where the therapist sent morning pictures, words or emojis to the young person's phone on weekdays identified as difficult. The picture might be of trees in blossom outside the clinic, an optimistic emoji or a couple of words several days a week and this was enough. Other young people have set up a reminder on their phone during a session to take a picture every day, perhaps to share with their therapist at the next session. Such activities exist in the interzone between psychodynamic, cognitive behavioural and systemic practices and may therefore be more helpful for different clients. 
These interventions are achievable at a distance, making arts therapeutic interventions accessible to more people.